Before this earth existed, there was only water. It stretched as far as one could see, and in that water there were birds and animals swimming around. Far above, in the clouds, there was a skyland. In that skyland, there was a great and beautiful tree. It had four white roots, which stretched to each of the sacred directions, and from its branches, all kinds of fruits and flowers grew. There was an ancient chief in the skyland. His young wife was expecting a child, and one night she dreamed that she saw the great tree uprooted. The next day, she told her husband the story. He nodded as she finished telling her dream. My wife, he said, I am sad that you had this dream. It is clearly a dream of great power and, as is our way, when one has such a powerful dream, we must do all we can to make it true. The great tree must be uprooted. Then the ancient chief called the young men together and told them that they must pull up the tree. But the roots of the tree were so deep, so strong, that they could not budge it. At last, the ancient chief himself came to the tree. He wrapped his arms around it, bent his knees, and strained. At last, with one great effort, he uprooted the tree and placed it on its side. Where the tree's roots had gone deep into the skyland, there was now a big hole. The wife of the chief came close and leaned over to look down, grasping the tip of one of the great tree's branches to study her. It seemed as if she saw something down there, far below, glittering like water. Her grasp slipped off the tip of the branch, leaving her with only a handful of seeds as she fell down, down, down. Birds in the sky saw her and caught her. She is not like us. Look, she doesn't have webbed feet. I don't think she can live in the water. <laughs> what shall we do then? I know. I have heard that there is earth far below the waters. If we dive down and bring up earth, then she will have a place to stand. One by one, they tried. Now where can we put it? I will bring up the earth or die trying! It was a tiny muskrat. She dove down and swam and swam. She was not as strong or as swift as the others, but she was determined. She went so deep that it was all dark and still she swam deeper. She swam so deep that her lungs felt ready to burst, but she swam deeper still. At last, just as she was becoming unconscious, she reached out one small paw and grasped at the bottom, barely touching it before she floated up almost dead. She has the earth. Now where can we put it? Place it on my back. They brought the muskrat over to the great turtle and placed her paw against his back. To this day, there are marks at the back of the turtle's shell, which were made by the muskrat's paw. The tiny bit of earth fell on the back of the turtle. Almost immediately, it began to grow larger and larger until it became the whole world. Then life on earth had begun. Step 